extraordinaire joined the band. We wrote our first songs together for a record called The Dreamwalker. And uh, we started, the very first song that we wrote, at least when we started writing it, now most songs are like verse, chorus, verse, chorus. On this song, we started writing together. The first song, I wanted to write like all these words, but like put the chorus at the end of the song. Kind of a different arrangement. But that shit was, was I wasn't like in the best like headspace. Like normally, I stay up all night long and like I listen to things and I read things and I try to figure out who are we and like where are we going and like what is this all about? Um, and I usually have something to say on that matter, as you all know. You're welcome. But we'll talk about that different time. On this thing, I was feeling, I was like in a bad space. My dad, literally the same point where him and I were writing this song, where normally I'm like trying to write something that lifts people up because I want to be lifted up, you know? And like, I feel like if I do it for you, then I see what's happening to you, and then I feel good. But my dad came down with cancer right at that time. So I was going, to, I went to the hospital. And I'm in this like small little room. And like, it was just me, and it's like my dad sitting right here, and there's like this doctor. And the doctor goes, okay, so you got this cancer. We don't really know what kind of cancer it is. It's like in your liver, it's in your kidneys, it's spread everywhere. And I was kind of okay with it because, I wasn't okay with it, but like I was used to it. Because when I was in seventh grade, he came down with leukemia. So he was fighting leukemia since I was in junior high. This was going into like my late 30s. And I remember the doctor said, we're gonna hit this so hard. We're gonna hit that cancer. We're gonna hit it with this chemotherapy. And then we're gonna hit it with this fucking chemotherapy. And my dad stopped the doctor and he goes, hey, what are you really saying here? The doctor paused, he took a deep breath, and he looked at me, he looked at my dad, and he goes, you have 18 months to live. Now, I don't know if you've ever been like in a high rise when an elevator goes down quick and your fucking stomach goes boom, like straight down. And then you get this like burst of like adrenaline and, and you feel like you're falling. I remember I'm sitting there and I felt like I was fucking falling. I was like, this is not fucking happening. Now, if you haven't lost somebody close to you, you're gonna. And there's a lot of people in here that have. This shit is really hard. So, my dad did not last 18 months. Some fucking complications, and he lasted about six months. And on the night that he went, like, he was in hospice, and he was pumped up with all this morphine. I will never forget taking him out of the ambulance. He was, like, laying in a sheet. And, like, I'm carrying the sheet with these paramedics to get him from, like, the hospital back into his own bed. And it was, like, the worst. Oh God, don't make me think about it, I'll cry. But it was hard. And we set him down, and he just needed a break. They gave him morphine, and I went home. And I was so tired, I was so emotionally exhausted. So I go to sleep, true story. Around 3 a.m., I wake up, and I get this like burst of electricity. I get this like, like I feel like drugs got injected into me. And I'm feeling something that's like, I've never felt this shit before. I sit up out of my bed and I feel like I'm high. I feel like I'm, I'm, I don't know what's going on. All the hair is standing up on my arms and in the back of my neck and I got all the goosebumps and shit. And I remember specifically, I looked to my right and there was a light, like these lights over here. I remember I looked up and I was like, what the fuck is this? And I don't understand, I felt so good. And I felt so like electrically charged. And there's this light in the room. And I was like blocking it with my, I literally blocked it with my hand. And right at that moment, my phone on my fucking nightstand buzzes. So I put my hand down and I look at my phone and it goes, your dad just passed. So I pick up the phone and I dial my sister. My sister was up at 3 a.m. I don't know why. I go, Carrie, she goes, oh my God, what's going on? And I go, I don't know what's going on. So I pause and I go, well, how do you feel? 
she didn't know my dad died. She goes, I don't know. It's, I don't. I feel something's weird. Something's happening right now. I don't understand what it is. I feel like I'm buzzing. I feel like. I feel like. And she pauses, and then she goes, I feel like I have a hug. I feel like this warm hug. What's going on? And, and I go, Carrie, dad just died. And I knew exactly what was going on. You know what I told her? I go, his soul went fucking straight through me and it went straight through you and that's what the fuck's going on and I knew this because when his mom my grandmother died it was the same shit but it was a little bit like lighter it wasn't as strong it was four in the afternoon I went home she was in hospice she was on morphine and when she died it was like like I woke up and I was like what Jesus Christ and I was like what is this and then my phone rang and I picked it up and I was like hello and my dad was there and he goes hey your grandmother just passed and he was crying on the phone so I knew the fucking feeling it changed my life I went to the house my dad is in the back room and he's laying there and they're crying and they're like do you want to go see your dad and I said fuck you I don't want to go see that body he's not in there he's not in there he's somewhere else and it's fucking great and it's fucking beautiful and I felt it and I went to the funeral, and there's like 200 people, and everyone's fucking crying, and everyone's fucking complaining, and I get up on the microphone, and I said, fuck off, it's not about the body, it's about something bigger, and if you guys felt it, you would know what I'm talking about, so guess what, do you guys remember when Alon joined the band, and I started writing that song, that song that had all those words, when that built up to like a chorus, that I was cynical, I was in a bad place. So I wrote all these words about like, I don't know what to believe, I don't know what to feel, I don't know what's on the other side, I feel like shit because my dad is passing away and it fucking hurts. So I go back to the studio, I grab that song off the shelf and bet your fucking ass I had an ending to this song. I had a big ending to this song. Because everything that I felt, where you feel lost and you feel sad and you feel like you're losing someone that's like close to you, and you don't know what this is all about. I felt something that was like, it's like supernatural. It's like paranormal. It's like when you have a friend that touches something and they come back to you and they're saying, I felt something. And you're like, I don't really believe you, but I love you. Cool. I believe you had this weird experience, whatever, and you go back, oh, I don't know. I am telling you, motherfuckers, this shit is real, and it changed my life. So, I grab the song, I write the ending, and at this point, we're gonna play the song for you, but it's not in honor of my own dad. It's in honor of you guys, because at the end of the day, no matter how hard shit gets, no matter how lost you get, no matter how far off of the highway that you drive and you feel like you're on a bumpy road and nothing's really working, I am here to tell you that everything's gonna be okay. I felt it for a glimpse and it changed my life. So for Atlanta, Georgia tonight, this song is called Tunnels and it goes like this. Still, without the bow shot, cause we're all asleep at the wheel, asleep in so surrounded by what we feel, a bad dream. On a rope, pull through the ocean. Thank you. 